Aleluya. Aleluya, gloria a Dios, gloria a Dios. Come on, let's worship a God. This beautiful Sunday morning. Vamos a alabar a nuestro Dios en este maravilloso domingo. Aleluya, bienvenidos. I just want to welcome you, everybody here. Welcome to Turning Point Fellowship. Everybody on Facebook, welcome to Turning Point Fellowship. And YouTube, welcome. Pastor uh, Abel, bienvenido. Can we welcome Pastor Angel's father, Abel Baruch. Bienvenido a su maravillosa esposa también. Before we get started, we want to read some announcements. You guys ready? Are you guys excited? Yeah. Come on. God is doing something. Come on. We've been praying for this. Hallelujah. First announcements, please. Brother Fred. We're going to celebrate Brother Fred's life. I expect you guys to come. Come with a smile. Celebrate here with his family and all of us. Celebrate his life. Come on. I know, he'll, I know he will be here for you. Amen. Next one, please. Resurrection Sunday. Come on. Come on. That should be a moment of celebration, a day of celebration. For he is alive. He is alive. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. And just spend the day with us. You know, we, we're going to have people that, uh, from the community. We're going to go. Uh, the gen some of the gentlemen went out and reached out to the community yesterday. And I say, come, you know what? Maybe they haven't heard from the Jesus that changed their life. Maybe they don't know the Jesus that transformed you. Maybe they don't know the Jesus that, that loved you unconditionally. We can help them out right there. Just, you know, you don't have to preach to them. Just tell them, you know what? Today, you know what we're celebrating? That he came to life. He's alive. Who? My Savior. And then it's an opportunity for you to just share. Amen? Amen. Women's meeting. We have any women in the house? Woo! Come on, ladies. That will be uh, Saturday, April 15th, uh, right on your calendar, right on your calendar. Yesterday, we had an uh, awesome men's meeting, awesome men's meeting. You know, and I got the opportunity uh, on Thursday, um, there was a gentleman that was here, and um, I, told, I told him, hey, you should come to the men's meeting. He said, yeah. I said, it's going to be great, man. He was, I was like, you, if you need a ride, if you need anything, let me know. He goes, I need a ride. I said, okay, cool. Um, I didn't realize that he lived in uh, Fontana out there. But you know what? Let me tell you. It's worth it. Amen. It's Amen. worth it. Because he, he's rededicating his life to the Lord. And that's what we got to do. Those are the things that, that that's, the, that's what we do what we do. For, for. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. You guys look at this flyer? We got men's arise. A rise man of God combining with men of a higher men of a higher standard. Come on. I know God is doing something to the men. I, I'm, I'm, I'm witnessing. I'm watching it. So just, just come on out. On Friday, it's going to be to everybody. Open up to everybody. So come on out. Bring your kids. Just, there'll, there'll be no, um, no child care. So they can sit here with us and just worship with us all through the service. Uh, Pastor Eric. And then we're going to have Prophet Steve Davis here. Prophet Steve Davis here. And on Saturday, who's that gentleman right there? Oh, that's Pastor Angel. Yeah, <laughs> Pastor Angel and Pastor Mark are also going to be here. But that's only going to be for the men. And let me tell you, men, stay connected. Men, come and get filled. When I was uh, driving with that young man that I told you I brought on Saturday... I told him, you know, I told him, it's really, ever since God changed my life, I made it a point to be to here with the men. I said, because I need to stay ready. I need to stay fired up. I need, I need even though you might, be, you might be in a good season in your life, and that's good. Praise God. That's good. But you know what? You got to stay ready. You got to be ready. You got you to be, uh, and if you're good, you, you can be here and encourage somebody that needs, that needs something that you have. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful fellowship. That's it for the announcements. Um, I was told about the women's conference. Uh, if you haven't paid, come on down. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't need to be looking for you. You just, just, you know, it's good for you. It's a great thing. Amen. 
All right. All right, let's pray. I'm ready. I'm ready to worship. Pastor Angel, we love you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Father. Surely your spirit is in this place, your joy, your love. And as we get ready to worship you, Father, in freedom, Father. We're thankful for all that you've done in our lives, Father, within our, our families, Father, and our people around us, Father, and ourselves, Lord. We prepare our hearts right now to just to worship you, Father, for you are worthy, Father. We prepare our hearts, Father, to lift your name up high, Father, and exalt you, Father. And I pray, Father, that as we worship you, Father, it just be about you and only you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the hearts that you're changing today, Father. Thank you for the lives that you're changing today, Father. And those, Father, that are, are on Facebook, Father, that they'll be encouraged, Father, to be here with, with, their, with your people, Father, Lord, to worship you, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the miracle once again that you've done in our pastor, Lord. For the supernatural healing that's taking place, Father, as your blood flows through his body, Father, Lord. That his new heart that you've given him, Father, pumps that blood that you gave him, put within him, Father, Lord. We thank you, Father. If we rejoice, Father, in you, Father, as we worship you, in Jesus' name we thank you. Amen, amen, amen. And I say, go sate. Go sate. Worship you, God. Come on down. Hallelujah.
joy, who I got joy, who I got joy, who I got joy, who I got joy. Oh, I got peace, oh, I got peace, who 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 I got peace. I got love, who I got love, who I got love, who I got love. Who I got love, who I got love, who I got love, who I got love. Jesus, that there's freedom in you. Is there freedom in the house of the Lord today? How many of us are free? Say, I'm free. free. God's giving me liberty. Glory. Goodness, Lord. 
So there is still purpose. Amen. Amen. Let's get excited, church. Excited that we could come fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and uplift one another. Amen. Yes. Lord, inhabit the praises of your people. Yes. We behold you, Father. You behold us. You draw near to us as we draw near to you.
don't, don't clap, don't clap, please. As I'm there worshiping with you, it was like the Holy Spirit was saying, I invite you into the Holy of Holies. You see, in the, in the Moses Tabernacle, there was the outer court, the inner court, and then there was a Holy of Holies, and not everyone could come in. But when Jesus was resurrected, the Bible says the curtain was ripped from the top to bottom. What does that mean for all of us? We're celebrating resurrection next week, but you know, resurrection day is every day for a Christian. And as, as, as this song was going forward, I believe some of you were tugged by the Holy Spirit to come up. They're like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel like Take this opportunity right now that the Holy Spirit is inviting you to come into the presence of God. Don't stand on the outside. Don't stand in the outer court or the inner court. But come so that you can see and sense the presence of God face to face in His holiness, His holiness, His omnipresence. God's called us to be holy for He is holy. Come to the altar. Come with an open heart to worship the King of Kings with all your heart. Don't let anything stop you.
we would hear the angels crying holy we hear we hear them crying holy 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 is the lord full of glory all together we hear them crying. We hear them crying. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. We join them. We join them crying. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord full of Holy is the Lamb of God. Righteous is the Lamb of God. He holds us in His hand. To keep us from ourselves. I say thank you this morning, Lord for keeping me in your hands, in your holy hands. You have held us. You've embraced us. You've loved us. You have been faithful. And you are forever. Holy are you, my God. Worthy is our God. Jesus the Christ as we stand with the angels this morning we say thank you Lord thank you for your faithfulness thank you for your agape love you've loved us without condition muchísimo de gracias Señor Muchísimo de gracias, Señor. Muchísimo de gracias for una oportunidad to give back to you. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that you give us every single day to give just a portion of our gratitude back to you. make our way to our seeds family hallelujah it's time to pick up the offering the tithe and the offering our God is so good that he gives us an opportunity to give back what's rightfully his. He gives us an opportunity to come before him and honor him. You see, family, our God is good. <laughs> we serve a great God. We serve a faithful God. 
that even when we weren't good, yeah, come on, he's holy. We're, we're nothing before God. Even in our mess, he was faithful to us. There was no condition. Why do we put conditions? Why do we limit a limitless God? Why do we hold out what's rightfully His? No more. We say no more in Jesus' name. I say no more in Jesus' name. Prepare your offering this morning. Can you please put that scripture up? Prepare your offering. Pray over your offering. Thank God for the opportunity to give as you do so. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Whoo, that's our God. He doesn't change. He's the same. Amen? That's the God we serve. That's the God that we can rely on. That's our faithful God. Jesus. Hallelujah to the king. We got uh, this handsome brother here, married man, and Gustavo that will be handing out the tithing envelopes, family. Hallelujah. Where's our children at this morning? If you didn't, if you weren't able, or maybe you forgot, or, or maybe cash is not something you normally deal with. If you didn't bring any cash to give today for the opportunity to seed, to, to, to plant seed in this good ground, then you can go ahead and dial 714. You can text 714-77-7736. That's area code 714 477 Seven seven three six. Here at Turning Point Fellowship, we don't come and take your offering. You bring your offering uh, from your heart. Amen. Let's honor the Lord in Jesus' name.
Brother Tony, Sister Conte, would you mind to bless the offering, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your arms forward, if you will, in faith, believing God, because he is our provider. He meets every need. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, this morning, Father together, Lord, to make you the focal point, Father God, to worship you in unison, Father God, because you are our God. Father God, for your word says, Father, we come to you, we must believe that you are, Father. You are our immediate help in time of need. Father, you never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Father. And today, Father God, as we come together, Father, we bring the tithe and the offering, Father God, which rightfully is yours, Father. But we thank you, Father God, that according to your word, Father, you say that we're to test you in this, Father God, that you will open up the windows of heaven on our behalf, Father God, that you will pour out a blessing on your people that they cannot contain, Father. Father, and I thank you, Lord, for that blessing, Father. And I thank you that the enemy is rebuked, Father God. Father, I thank you for this seed, Father God, Lord, that, Father, this house of worship Father, we'll never, Father, go without, Father. Father, we thank you that the needs of your people are met, Father. Father, bless this tithe and offering, we pray, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God one more praise. Hallelujah to the King. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At this point, we're going to go ahead and release the kids, but the, the uh, youth will be staying in this morning, okay? So we're watching you. Make sure no youth hit those back doors. As for the children, be blessed. Pastors, evangelists, servants, plumbers, contractors, CEOs, CFOs. Bless your children, family. This is the next generation. Bless the children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a treat this morning. Pastor L, come on and bring it, my brother. Bring that word, family. Welcome the man of God, Pastor L. Hallelujah. Am I on? Okay. Is there a podium or? Oh, okay. Do we, we have the floor one? No? Yeah, please. Um, can you guys um, sing, uh, I sing praises to your name? Can you step? Thank you. Good morning, family. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be in the house of God. Amen. It's okay, we're just going to worship just a little bit more if that's okay. I sing praises to your name. If he's been good to you this morning. Praises to your name. I had some true worshipers in the house. I sing praises to
Where's Sister Olivia? Where's Sister Olivia? God said he's promoting you. God said he's promoting you. He said he's bringing you from the forefront to, from the back to the forefront because you've been faithful. You've been on your knees. You've been praying. You took care of your own natural family, and so he's going to increase. Get ready, because ministry is coming. Sister Connie, I said like a sniper. With all that ministry that's on the inside of you, it's not just your brother. Like a sniper, he's going to start opening doors for you to minister. Because it's on the inside of you, and you're quiet, but he's going to go ahead and he's going to open up that mouth. He's going to open up that mouth so that you can speak into the lives of people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thomas, it's a lot more fun when we stop running, huh, when we answer the call. It's a lot more fun, huh? Spirit of God says that the anointing that's on the inside of you is already increasing because you remain hungry. Don't buck. Don't kick against the correction or the reproving. It's just rounding out the soft edges. And the one that he's using to do it to, through, he had to go through the same thing. It's the process. Embrace the process. But he loves you and he's proud of you. Thank you, Jesus. Your sister Margarita. Sister Margarita. She's in the nursery. God is like a bubble expanding the gift on the inside of you. Because you're willing to give it full strength. What he gives to you, you give straight out. And so he's expanding it like a bubble on the inside of you to the point where you won't be able to contain it. Not that your spirit will be out of control and you just start going off. But when he tells you to speak, he'll have to give you the signal to stop speaking. Instead of you feeling like you're speaking too short, you're going to be, because the Holy Spirit is taking over your tongue. You've been through the fire. You've been through the trenches. You've shown yourself faithful. And so now it's time for the next step. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to gather around your table, gather around your house. And Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do in this place, Lord, we get out of the way. I get out of the way, Lord, so that you can have your way. That the name of Jesus would be made manifest, be known, Father. Even outside of these four walls and that only his name would be glorified in this place, in this space. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, let's stand for our, our confession. If you have your Bible. Go ahead and, and grab it and just hold it up. You guys ready? Yeah. I say, you ready? Yeah. All right. Let's go. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. I boldly confess. My, mind my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will, I will never be the same. I'm about to receive, about to receive the, incorruptible, the incorruptible, indestructible, indestructible ever living seed, ever seed of, the of the word of God. I will never be the same. I, the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. All right, come on, Bible thumpers. You all may be seated. I believe we have special guests in the house, Pastor Angel. Let's give it up. Angel's father. Yes? Okay. Awesome. Welcome, sir. And um, the angel of this house, Pastor Angel, I want to say thank you. And I, I believe you're watching. I hope you're watching. I love you very much, sir. And I'm thankful for the opportunity. Um, family, how are y'all doing today? I'm not convinced. How are y'all doing today? So um, I, I was driving uh, to the gym, and God just starts downloading in me. How many of you guys remember Pastor Angel saying, you want to keep like a notepad and a pen or something next to your bed, right? 
You probably need to keep that everywhere you go. Especially the nighttime, right? Because you, you, he will wake you up and he'll just start downloading, downloading, downloading. And so I'm on the way to the gym. I hit the parking lot and he just starts downloading, downloading, downloading. And sometimes he'll tell me what it's for, uh, what, what the message is for. Sometimes he won't. And I was like, oh, this is good, but I'll write it down later. And then 30 minutes later, I was like, Holy Spirit, I need you to bring it back to our remembrance. Because I just, like, I could have grabbed a pen and started writing it down. Didn't. Right a few seconds before, I think it was like the next day, the same time, that's when I got the, the uh, text message to go ahead and, and to minister today. And when I, I got the title of this message, and we did that confession of faith for a reason, for a purpose, because it actually ties into this. If you're going to write any notes today, <clears throat> the title of today's message is Rising Above the Level of Being an ABC. Rising Above the Level of Being an ABC. Now, before I tell you guys what an ABC is, um, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page really quickly. I'm going to need some help this Sunday. Can you guys help me out? All right, and when I mean help, I mean we're going to engage together. We're going to dive into the word together. We're going to feast together, okay? Can y'all do that for me? All right, okay. And ABC stands for a basic Christian. A basic, a basic Christian. Rising above the level of an ABC and pressing towards the prize. I told Brother Ryan yesterday he did an awesome job with the men. I said, you, I said, I'm thankful I came. I said, but it, you were like the forerunner for what God wanted me to share today. And I'm glad I heard it because he said certain things that continue to, um, how do we call it, Pastor Eric? Like when it just triggers you on the inside. Not in a bad way, but it just, you're like, it's like a spark of fire. And you know it's the Holy Spirit because he's, he's trying to get your attention. He made a statement yesterday. He said, we as believers are not supposed to be maintaining our Christianity. Turn with me to Acts chapter 17. When you, if, you're, if you're a Christian, if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, for you to maintain your Christianity is almost akin of you getting up, brushing your teeth, showering, going to work, coming back, going to sleep, and doing the same thing 365 days a year. Okay. Here's, and I should have probably done this first because you guys say y'all are going to engage and interact with me. Yes? Amen. All right. Um, I want you guys to give me some definitions for the word basic. What are some, some definitions that come to mind? Simple. What else? Normal. What else? Repetitive. Average. All of those are correct. We're not supposed to be simple. We're not supposed to be normal. We're not supposed to be average. Some slang terms for the word basic is unoriented, unexceptional, mainstream. In Acts chapter 17, Paul is rolling around and he's doing what God has called him to do. How many of you guys know that God has called you to do something? Maybe it's not the five-fold ministry gift, but God has put gifts and talents on the inside of you. How do I know that? Because the nature and the character of God is to have some, is to create things that produce. God does not do duds. He does not do non-essential things. When he created you, he created you with all the seed that you needed. Think about it. One apple seed can create an orchard of a thousand trees. That's just the way God rolls. So I know that everybody in here, we heard it today during praise and worship. But you're still here, you're still standing, you still have a purpose. Yeah. Acts chapter 17, Paul is rolling around doing what God has called him to do, preaching and healing people, miracles are popping off. But there was a group of people, religious people, that didn't care about how people were getting helped and set free. They wanted to control it. If you're taking notes, that's one way that you know that the enemy is behind something. When something is trying to be controlled. It's a move of God and someone's trying to control it. Someone gets set free and yet really, really quickly the enemy sends someone else like, well, you know, you know, let's not get too radical. 
Let's not talk about Jesus too much. You know, the doctor did say that eventually this would go. No, 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 no. Dr. Jesus was working through the doctor, if anything. And so Paul is coming. These group of Jews are trying to stop a move of God. They're trying to control it. They're trying to put parameters around God. God was very specific. He said, look, in the Old Testament, I let you guys put my presence in a box. When my son comes, I'm putting my presence in people, and it's breaking forth. God's not going. He's not going in anymore. Acts chapter 17 and in verse 6, it said, but when they did not find him, because they were looking for Paul, and there was a guy named Jason who was harboring Paul in this land, because he was like, Paul, like, you're doing good, and we need you here, but there are people that want to take you out. How many of you guys know, before we finish reading this scripture, if God is for you, no one can be against you? So I grew up hearing that scripture real quick. God is for me. Who can be against me, right? Spirit of God recently gave me this revelation For, F-O-R, is also another way of saying before. So if God is before me, no one can be against me because he's clearing a path. The problem is when we try to get in front of God and do what he does, which only he can do, and then we wonder. So in order for God to be for me and for that to be manifest. He's always going to be for us, but he's not for disobedience or rebellion. In order for God, for me to see God being for me, I have to humble myself. Even if there's a leader in the church that I may not necessarily like, I got to humble myself. Even if there's a supervisor that I know isn't saved and I don't care for, I got to humble myself. Listen, the Bible's very clear about positions and hierarchies. God set those up. If we would just do this, even though we have people that are over us that don't follow this, it becomes a witness and it saves them. I've seen it happen time and time and time and time again. Verse 6, it says, but when they did not find him, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these two have turned the world upside down, have come here too. The devil is afraid of if you get in touch with what God has put on the inside of you. They call these believers those that turn the world upside down. Family, there was nothing basic about the early church. And this isn't an indictment, or this isn't anything against those who just got saved. You're just learning about the things of God. You're a baby Christian. I'm talking about those of us that have been in the faith for a while. And we start getting bored, or we don't. I'm going to touch on six areas today. Six areas where we as believers can find ourselves being basic. And we got to shake that off of us because we were destined for so much more. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Now, in Matthew chapter 28, and I'm going to jump a little bit ahead. Jesus is given the Great Commission. And he uses a word because we're not going to go to this other scripture, so I'm going to put it out here. He uses the word. Uh, I'm sorry, praise and worship team. I didn't even dismiss you guys, but thank you, Enrique. Appreciate that. He uses the word authority. Matthew 28, verse 18. He uses the word authority. Let me do this. How many parents do I have in the house right now? All right, parents, can I get you guys to stand up real quick, please? Parents, can I get you to stand up? Don't worry, we're going to get a lot of workout calisthenics today. All right, how many of you you parents have ever had your child's friends over, and you know that they were doing something crazy or wrong, and all you did was walk into the room and everything got real quiet. Anybody? Like you, you, or, you, or you just looked at them, and all of a sudden, everybody got quiet. Okay? The, the, the parents with the good kids, they're not raising their hands. No. All right, you guys are good. You guys are good. Thank you, guys. Verse 18, it said, and Jesus came and he spoke to them, saying, Jesus is leaving earth. He came to them and he said, all authority, everybody say authority, Authority. has been given to me. I can't hear you guys. Has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 
Now, here's the thing. And you read on later on, you can see that he gave it to us, verse 19, in the latter part, because it's a great commission, right? Why would Jesus mention authority on earth if he's going to heaven? You think he needs it up there? It's because of us. Jesus is saying, I got the whole shebang. Not just down here, but up. Go to verse 19. Because I wouldn't even go to verse 19, but let's go to verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he talks about the other things of the Great Commission. Now, check this out. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And you know what he ends up doing? He ends up giving it to them. And the them today is you and me. Now, that word authority is the word exousia. It means power. If you go to Acts chapter 1, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they get power from on high. That word is dunamis. Both of them mean power, but they're two different types of power. The power in Matthew chapter 28, 18, that's like your rank. That's your position, your jurisdiction. In other words, and I had a friend tell me the other day, like in their wild days, because Long Beach, if you know the city of Long Beach, Signal Hill, that area, they're next to each other, but it's different jurisdictions. So when they were breaking the law, they would just cross the border, and the police from one jurisdiction couldn't pursue because they didn't have authority there. Parents, raise your hands. I'm not going to have you guys stand up. Raise your hands, parents. You guys have exousia authority in your household. The devil can only do what you allow him to do. Now, the other word in Acts chapter 1, where Jesus said you'll get power, dunamis. That's where we get the word dynamite from. That's strength. That's like ability. That's like me being able to lift up this podium with one pinky while I'm balancing this on my toe. It's explosive. That's what we get when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's my question, family. Which one is greater, exousia authority, jurisdiction, or dunamis power, strength? All right, raise your hand if you think dunamis power, strength. Nobody wants to take the open book quiz now all of a sudden. (laughs) Thank you, sister. Raise your hand if you think exousia. You guys are correct when you say exousia. Here's the reason why. You have a 150-pound police officer standing in an intersection, and you have an 18-wheeler coming at 30 miles an hour. When that police officer puts his hands up, his exousia stops the dunamis. Not my example, my, my pastor who raised me. He used it when I was growing up, but I just remember. His jurisdiction tells that truck to stop, and it has to stop. Family, I'm here to let you know we have both of them. Look, we, not only do we have both of them, they supersede the devil. This is like us, and all this other stuff is the devil in his kingdom. But what he will do if we act basic is he'll take advantage of that. It was the spirit of God, I think, that taught me that because I used to have a fear of dogs, you used to, like, run away from them and stuff like that. They're on the loose. If I look straight at that, I, sometimes I don't even have to talk. If I look straight at that dog and let them know who's in charge, normally, like, they get it. And not me, like, encroaching on their territory. Like, if I look at it in its eyes and let us know, like, yeah, this isn't going to end well for you. Normally, they get it. And, again, it's not me looking for trouble. That's what we have to do with the enemy. We got to let, we have to let them know that we know our power. We know our authority. Because, not because of us, but because of the name of Jesus. We just confessed, I am what it says. Listen, when we say that confession, do you understand every time you say I am, you, you are pronouncing to the world, you're pronouncing to everyone that you are one with the Father? That's what his name is, I am, one of his names. We just said, I am. So I'm saying, I'm a child of God. We said, I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. So today is an open book test. We're going to reevaluate ourselves. But from here on out, 
That confession of faith is not just something that we do. It better be real to you. Otherwise, you've made it basic. It's a declaration. You're reminding yourself. You're reminding yourself, like, oh, wait, hold up. This right here, this is my birth certificate. This is my spiritual driver's license. This is my spiritual bank account. When we, I'm going to get into the six areas in a second. Here's a question. Within the last year, because we're in 2023, 2022, has anybody asked God for repentance between here to last year? Anyone? And those who don't raise your hand, it's okay. We'll have an altar call afterwards. <laughs> all right. So here's the question then. We all ask for, for repentance. It's something that we, we have to do, you know, daily. Um, <clears throat> How many of you guys sacrificed a goat, sheep, cow, bird? Anybody? Nobody? You did? For repentance? Okay. All right. All right. Oh, okay. I get what you said. I get what you, I'm talking physically. All right? I, I understand what you're saying. Physically, okay? Why don't we do that anymore? Why don't we sacrifice animals anymore? Oh, because of Jesus' sacrifice, right? Because Jesus fulfilled it, right? Part of not being basic is understanding that when you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus' life, with him talking, right, with him moving with his disciples, you have to understand that that's intertestamental. Everybody say that, intertestamental. In other words, he's between the Old Testament and he's bringing about the New Testament. He's fulfilling both of them. You guys are right on point. We don't sacrifice animals anymore because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Now, why did you bring that up, L? It's simple. When we read the Old Testament scriptures, you got to read it through New Testament lenses. Otherwise, you're, you're, live, you're trying to do what God has called you to do under the age of grace, under, under the law. It's like, it's like trying to go forward, but you're going like this. You have to read. The, there's a reason why Jesus said it is finished, which is the end to the Old Testament. He fulfilled everything. And then he gives a new commandment. Turn with me to, if I can find it. I can't find it right now. Oh, yes, I can. Turn with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. When you begin to start reading the Old Testament, with New Testament lenses, it makes sense, and you don't sound like a throwback. Have you guys ever seen one of those people that they're, they're just like stuck in an era? Like, like whether it's the 70s or the, when I mean stuck in an era, everything, the clothes, the music, the, the, uh, the slang, the way they, anybody, anybody ever? Based on how we navigate through the word, the devil, we show the devil whether or not we know what we have. John chapter 5. Sorry, I should have given you all the verse, huh? (laughs) Enrique's like, yeah, that would help. John chapter 5, verse 37. Jesus makes this awesome statement. And he says, John chapter 5, verse 37 And the Father himself who sent me has testified to me, you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form, but you do not have his sword abiding in you. Am I in the right place? Oh, did I say Luke? I was just making sure you guys were awake. Praise God for your ministry. All right, Luke chapter 5. Extra credit, you guys. I get extra credit. All right. Luke chapter 5, verse 37. Jesus says, And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he says the old is better. What is he talking about? He's talking about the new covenant that he was bringing. He's talking about... All the promises that are in the New Testament, that's the new wine. Here's the analogy. When you have an old wine skin made out of a goat or a calf or whatever, whatever animal skin, right? 
You pour new into new, uh, you pour new wine into a new wine skin because it will expand. It'll expand. If you pour new wine, and if you know anything about alcohol, alcohol has to ferment. You pour it into an old wine skin that's already kind of worn out. When it starts to expand, it's going to burst it. So Jesus is saying, this new covenant, this new testament, this new thing that I'm setting up where they'll be called followers of me, what we call Christians, you try to put this into the old covenant, and it's going to burst it. So what I'm doing right now, not only am I creating something that will be able to withhold what I'm about to do, but it has to be that way. And then he gives that last scripture and he says, look, he says, everybody who's tasted the old wine, they don't want the new right away. In other words, he's saying sometimes it's hard for people to stop being basic because they desire the old ways. It's comfortable. I've already got my groove. Look, I set up my, I set up my day every, way, like, every day like this. Ten minutes to pray to God, 20 minutes to read my scriptures, 30 minutes may listening to praise and worship depending on how traffic is, and then I'm going on to the next thing. Our first area is communication with the Father, the Word, and prayer. Y'all going to tell me how much time I got because I don't want to go. All right. I just, I want to make sure. All right. Communication. Go ahead and turn to uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And for each of these areas, I'm going to actually tell you some of the mindsets, some of the words that we say that will identify as basic. I shared a little bit with the communication with the Father. I got to do my daily devotion. I got to read my X amount of scriptures. It's almost like it's a checkoff list. How many of you guys know that the word of God is actually God having a conversation with us? God showed me that. I was like, oh, so every time I I choose not to crack this open, that means that I'm basically saying, I'm good, Father. I don't want to hear from you. Oh, and best believe, to make sure that we don't get into a religious rut, God will actually change up your reading plan. I was on a track. I, I, I try to do a certain, and I don't really number them. It's like, it's like eating because it is spiritual food. When I get full, that's when I stop. When I get, and normally sometimes for me, and everybody is different, it's when I hit that nugget of revelation that I can't budge off of. And then I got to say, okay, what are you trying to show me? Didn't Jesus say, give us this day our daily bread? Didn't he say to the devil that man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out the mouth of? How are we making it through our day without talking, hearing what his instructions are for us? For that day. I'm not talking about yesterday. And trust me, I've been guilty of it trying to live off of yesterday's revelation. See, I don't know how many people follow, follow fighting, any type of combat fighting. Some of the greatest fighters, what they do is for one round, it'll look like they're weak. But what they're doing is they're gathering data. It's called a fighter's IQ. They're seeing how does your shoulder dip? Where does your foot go? How are you, that second round, whatever they, whatever they gather from the first round, they come out looking totally different. You try to live off of yesterday's revelation thinking the devil won't know what's coming his way. You guys at John 10 yet? All right. John 10, verse 27. Jesus says this, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. With communication with God, reading his word, you get real good at hearing God's voice. You get really good. Here's the reason why. The devil caught Eve slipping by putting in a little bit of him with a little bit of God. It's called mixed bag. When there's some God, but there's some not God, and when we can't discern, that's how he gets most Christians slipping. Look, the two faiths, Jehovah's Witness and Mormons, both of the men that started those faiths 
were actually believers before this started. And those things are all over, it just sprang up all over the place. So don't tell me that a little lie from the enemy, I mean, look at the world. A little lie from the enemy. We got to get very good at hearing our Father's voice. The way we do that is hearing this. You get to know the nature and character of God by spending time with him. And I'll say this last point, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go I'm gonna go on to the next area. If you don't know how to pray in the spirit, that's like trying to fight the devil with one thumb while he has an army tank pointed at you. You can be successful because it's, it's listen, it's the grace of God anyways. You get, so, I mean, which is, you know, flick a bullet here, here a bullet, there a bullet, everywhere a bullet, bullet, right? With just your thumb. But you have a whole infantry behind you. Why wouldn't you use it? And the reason why I said that is because the Holy Spirit is the one that will tell you, mm -mm. like, I didn't listen to him yesterday. He told me, hell, pull out a certain amount of cash. I'm like, ATMs ain't going nowhere. God, I'll be good. An hour later, I was like, yeah, I should have listened to you. I should have, because I wasted time and energy and effort. But I knew it was his voice. That's the point. Number two is our health. Everybody say health. All right, let me get one volunteer real quick. One volunteer, a male, most likely. One volunteer, no volunteer. Come on. Thank you, Gina. Oh, Brother Burr. Come on up, Brother Burr. Brother Burr, you might want to have your Bible real quick. Grab your Bible. All right. <clears throat> when it comes to our health, you need to stand right here. Don't worry. We're going to use you in a second. Here are some basic statements. I'll pray to God for my healing. Now, listen, this right here, you have to quantify it because there's a certain way to pray to God. If you're going to pray over and over again, it's a prayer of thanksgiving. You're not asking him the same thing again. Imagine if your child asked you over and over again, Mom, Dad, can, can I have a, a, a bed in my room? Mom, Dad, can I have a bed in my room? Mom, Dad, can I have a bed? You already have a bed in your room. Why do we do that to the Father? It's different when your, your child is saying, Mom, Dad, I'm so thankful for this bed that you put. That's out of gratitude. Now, for the believer, when it comes to praying for healing, we thank God for what we already have. All right, Brother Bert, you guys at John chapter 10? Oh, cool, you guys are already there. Ah, that works. <clears throat> I'm going to play the devil. Brother Bert is a believer. Oh. Yeah, we didn't even practice this. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Brother Bert. That represented his divine health. Notice it, <laughs> the fact that I was surprised. The first time I tugged, I was surprised. That See, for Christians, as believers, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have divine health. In other words, as far as God is concerned, you are 100% whole. Divine healing, when we lay hands on the sick and they recover. When we do that, that's for the world, those who don't have a relationship with Jesus yet. Let's check out John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, the thief does not come except to what? I can almost hear you guys. To do what? Didn't I just try to steal from him right now? But he knew what was his. Trust me, the devil will try you. God doesn't need to try you because God already knows. He's the one who put it in there. It's us and the devil who don't know what we can stand up to until we go through it. And when you go through it and you have what I like to call spiritual weight, you're not basic in that area anymore. You saw how he pulled back. It says the, the thief comes to kill, to steal, to kill, and destroy. Anytime there's theft in your life, Anytime there's destruction in your life, anytime there's a killing of an opportunity, we got to stop blaming God and thinking that God wants to discipline us this way. 
Question, parents. Are there any parents in here that to discipline your child, you would remove their bed and all their clothes out of their room so they were in an empty room? Any, any parents in here who would? So why do we think that God would discipline us that way? We open the door for the devil, and sometimes we forget that God's grace and mercy is still there. As long as we can turn. We go through unnecessary stuff because we choose not to turn quick enough. Remember when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter came out the boat and he began to walk too. The Bible said that he looked at the wind and the waves. Hey, not much time. All right, don't worry, we'll get through it. He looked at the wind and the waves and what ended up happening said, it's, the Bible says he began to sink. He didn't sink immediately. When you're on water, you go to the bottom. If you don't believe me, fill up your bathtub when you get home. Try to walk on that. See if you begin to sink or if you sink. He began to sink and Jesus reached out. Peter grabbed hold of his help. We got to get real good. Look, when we figure out, when we realize that we blow it, we got to get real good at reaching out. Number three is protection. Go ahead and turn with me to Exodus chapter 10. Here are some things that are basic that sometimes believers say when it comes to protection. I don't want this to happen. I got, this is, this is a common one, okay? I got to use wisdom. Okay, so check this out. <clears throat> If you're on your path to go somewhere, you know you're supposed to be there, and all of a sudden, you find out or hear something, and God didn't tell you. We think God is reactionary. God is not reactionary. God is always proactive. If you look at God's get down in the scriptures, he's always telling people what to do before they even encounter it, or he's already given them what to do before they encounter it. God doesn't wait for a situation to happen and go, oh, my God, Jesus, what are we going to do? No, he doesn't. He doesn't do that. Why would he do that when he already knows the end from the beginning? And he wants to set us up for success. So when a person tells me I got to use wisdom and I hear the tone of fear, we got to check that. Because my Bible tells me in 2 Timothy 1.7 that God hasn't given us the spirit of what? Why would I take something that the devil's given me over what my father's given me? 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God hasn't given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Another basic statement is, well, this happened over here, so... And then we make decisions based off of what the enemy is doing. We were bought with the the blood of Jesus. Now, we're going to read about one of the plagues. I'm going to move on after this. And, oh, by the way, let me just go go back to health real quick. Look at, um, you guys can write these scriptures down. Look at Luke chapter 17, because we didn't get to these. Luke chapter 17, the 10 lepers. Look at Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 24. And look at Mark chapter 7, verses 32 to 35. The reason why I chose those are those are three separate instances where Jesus is healing people. Because this is the other part to the, the health part. These are three separate instances where Jesus is healing people and he doesn't pray to God. He talks to the actual body of the person. Do you know why? Because Matthew 28, all authority in heaven and earth. You have authority over your body. Oh, you don't believe so? You told your body to get up and to get dressed and to come here? God didn't make you do that. Like, this is so important because the devil wants us to feel like we are victims of the circumstance. 
It doesn't matter whether it's a pain, whether it's a bruise. I don't care how old you are. If you're under the sound of my voice, you can speak to your knee, your ankle, and tell it to line up with the word of God. Look, look, and trust, and trust. The devil's going to try to tempt you. He tried to attack me with some symptoms uh, the other day, and I want to say um, he hadn't tried to do this in like five years. I, it, was a, it was an area on my leg that he was, he was trying to get me to buy into the system, buy into the system of what he was trying to do, which is try to take away my health. So I just brushed it off, and I ignored it because I have authority over my body. I don't say, oh, what is this? What could this be? Let me do some research on Google because then I'm doing... I'm, because then I'm having faith for whatever is trying to attack my body. And the devil's reading that. And he's getting his fighter's IQ. He's like, yep, they're dipping, they're weaving. Cool. When they drop their chin, I'm coming with that uppercut. All right, back to, back to protection. How much time I got? All right, all good. Protection. Exodus chapter 10. So in Exodus chapter 10, all these plagues are coming against Egypt because God wants his people to go. And there's a specific plague that is important that I think we need to be remembering, especially in the times that we're living in. All ten of the plagues, they attacked the ten gods of Egypt. On purpose, God did things. This one right here is probably one of my favorite. Let's read verse 21 of Exodus chapter 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. How, that's dark. When you feel dark, that's dark. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three. So they just all stayed in bed for three days. They were forced to fast for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. There's a part of Egypt before Pharaoh let God's people go to worship him that was called Goshen. And everywhere throughout the rest of the world, in Egypt at least, throughout the rest of Egypt, there was a thick darkness except where God's people was, there was... Don't tell me that with all these crazy shootings and everything, God can't protect his people. My God isn't that small. And I can, I've shared my testimony with a few of you guys where I've been hit, not in a car, but outside of a car, and I'm standing here right, right now. But I know that part of it is the, the fact that my parents, they prayed for me, they applied the blood of Jesus to me because I, I belong to him, and I'm still, the devil can't take you out unless you let him. Now, there are some things that we may not know, right, because he will, he'll go ahead and he'll try to exploit ignorance. There's sometimes even where people are believing, but their bodies just doesn't, it just doesn't hold up, right? But as far as those of us that hold to this as truth, regardless of what goes down, God is faithful. I got you. <laughs> the last three are actually, what is it, four? Provision. And I'll just say this with provision. You got to give whatever God tells you to give, even when you don't have it. Because when, when we give out of what we don't have, you set yourself up for a miracle. You, you set, literally, you set yourself up for a miracle. God is telling you to give something you're like, but God, that's my last. If you give it, watch what he does. Because when you give it, you're telling your situation, you're telling the devil, God is more real than this that I see in my account. If you get a chance, um, look at 1 Kings chapter 7. Verses 8 to 10, there's an awesome story where God required that of a widow and her son. Area number five is people and each other. We have to love each other regardless of what goes down. And in doing that, remember Jesus' words on the cross, and I say this often when I get a chance to teach. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're... He said that about the people who were crucifying him. He said, they don't know what... Now, if Jesus can say that, we're not better than Jesus. And the them not knowing what they're doing is they don't realize how they're hurting themselves. 
because we're all connected. If I hurt you, then I hurt me. Why? Because I'm sowing seeds of hurt. And in order to understand my head, and I have to go ask for repentance from you so that I'm clear. And some of us just need to set people free that have done offensive things to us for our good. Because they don't even know that they did something evil to you. But you need to be set free. Number six, and this is the last one, is information. What, is, what does the gospel mean, that word the gospel? Does anybody know what that word means? I can almost hear you guys. Come on, y'all, we're still in class. You guys are doing well. It's the good news. How many of you guys know that the devil has his own gospel? And it's called the news. All right, look, if you weigh out the percentage of good things that are reported on the news to bad things, it's like so out of balance. And trust me, I've been guilty of it before where God's like, yeah, you're not looking at your phone at all. Like, you're going you're gonna to have to stop looking at your phone for a hot minute. Because honestly, I don't really look at the news to get my information because this is where my information comes from. I would look at it for, for comedy, right? Because just some of the titles are like, you got to be kidding me. Here's the reason why we need to be on guard with that. Because when it goes against this, look, whatever you put in front of your eyes is going on to your soul. Whatever you allow yourself to hear is going on, and you got to do a cleanse with the word of God. So now you, there are times when we have to work harder than what we need to if we would just not do what we, would, what we used to do or what we're common to doing. When it comes about devastation and destruction and things of that nature, how are we reacting? Are we reacting like the world? Or are we automatically going into prayer mode? Are we automatically speaking peace to that situation? Are we automatically saying, nah, I could care less about the price of gas, eggs, steak, chicken, whatever. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. The wisdom of today will get the masses of tomorrow. The truth of today will expose the lies of yesterday and trump the lies of tomorrow. And the love that fuels who we are is eternal. Family, our God is calling us to rise up because of the miraculous that's about to start happening. God is always ready. It's not like he's not ready. It's his people that got to get on board. So we're in position. We're in the right position. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you, Lord, that what your people needed, Father, they were able to get, Father. And that as we continue to press towards what you've called us to do, Father, towards wanting to hear you say to each of us on that day, well done, good and faithful servant, Lord, that you help us to continue to stay in the character and the nature of you, which is love. In areas that we've gotten lazy or slack in, Lord, that you help us, Father, to jumpstart, to kickstart ourselves, Father, to do what we need to do, Lord. And as we're obedient to you, that your presence meets us face to face, and you give us the grace to continue to grow, to continue to mature, to continue to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, higher in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.